Deva di Deva Mahi Bushanam Indu Kasham Panchananam Pashupatim Varadam Prashanam Gangadaram Pranata Palaka Pashuto Sham Vande Sadashiva Hari Priya Chandrao Malin. The God of Gods, garlanded with its snake, shines like the moon which he wears on his crown. He has five heads, carries his Pashupat arrow, grants boons, and he is naturally satisfied. He holds the Ganges, protects those who bow to him, and is easily pleased. I offer my obeisance unto Sadashiva, who is dear to Hari. So on this wonderful day, I'm just going to read a little bit about Shivratri, Mahashivratri. And um, we don't usually hear these stories so nice, so I'm just going to read a traditional take on this, okay? On the auspicious day of the Mahashivratri, there is a natural tendency and even assistance from nature as evident by the positioning of the Northern Hemisphere to raise energies within the system. The whole system of yoga and spiritual process as such is about enhancing a human being from his limitations to his limitlessness. For this enhancement to happen, the most fundamental process is that there is an activation, an upward movement of energy, which is prominently observed on the day of Mahashivratri. An amalgamation of Lord Shiva with Kailash Parvat. For the ascetics, it is the day Lord Shiva became one with Mount Kailash. He became a mountain. Absolutely still. In the yogic tradition, the much sought after tradition in Hindu Dharma, where the seekers obtain the salvation through the physical, mental and spiritual practice of yoga, Shiva is not worshipped as a god, but as the Adi Guru, the first guru from whom the knowledge originated. After many millennia of meditation, one day he became absolutely still. That day is Mahashivratri. All movement in him ceased, and he became utterly still. So for ascetics, Mahashivratri is the night of stillness. Lord Shiva saved the world. The scriptures of the Hindu Dharma, mainly the Puranas, point out the inception of the festival towards the utterly fascinating tale of Samudra Manthan, or the churning of the ocean from where the Amrita, the drink of immortality, was derived. The churning of the ocean of milk was an elaborate process, and both the Devas and the Asuras painstakingly churned the Mount Mandara. In the due process of churning before the Amrit could be obtained, a number of things were released from the ocean. One of the many was the lethal poison known as Hala Hala, which as some tales have it, was so implacable it could destroy all of the creation. This terrified the gods, and they approached the revered Shiva, who then consumed the poison in an act to protect the universe. The Upadi, or title Nila Kanta, was attributed to Lord Shiva after this incident, as his throat turned blue from swallowing the poison. Shiv Ratri is the very celebration of this event by which Shiva saved the world. The marriage of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. After Goddess Sati, the eternal consort of Lord Shiva, immolated herself in the Yagya fire organized by her own father, King Daksha Prajapati, Lord Shiva took rigorous penance and retired to the Himalayas. After the penance of Lord Shiva seemed to be never ending. As the tales have it, Goddess Sati, reborn as Parvati, performed penance to break Shiva's meditation. She won his attention, and when none of it worked for gods of Swarga Loka, it is said she sought the help of Kamadev, the god of love and passion, the goddess of love and passion, who summoned Parvati to dance in front of Shiva. 
when Parvati danced, Kamadeva shot his oh sorry, Kamadeva shot his arrow of passion at Shiva, breaking his penance. Their marriage was solemnized a day before Amavasya in the month of Falgun. This very day of their unison is celebrated every year as Maha Shivratri. Observing night long vigil. The exuberant festival of Mahashivratri, if observed throughout the night, provides an, an ideal ambience to experience the natural upsurge of spiritual energy. Flabbergastingly observed with explosive meditations and spectacular musical performances, this unrivaled celestial extravaganza opens up the tremendous spiritual possibilities of the night. The night long vigil interspersed with colourful cultural presentations from around the globe, expresses the eloquence of the festival. Devotees sing hymns and chant mantras, especially Om Namo Shivaya. Some sit around the sacred fire and toss offerings of grain into the flames while chanting to Shiva, while others, after fasting and meditating throughout the day, hold a vigil all night with continued prayers and meditation. Other observances include pujas and abhishekas with temples dedicated to Lord Shiva filled with devotees offering prayers. The Shiva Linga at the temple or in one's home is bathed with milk, honey and water and offerings are made to Shiva in the form of bilva leaves or the Indian bale fruits or the Indian bale fruits and other specific, spe specially prepared foods. Offering Bilba leaves to Shiva on Mahashivratri is considered especially auspicious. There you go. Some nice little tales of Shiva to remind us. Um, you know, we know how dear he, he is to, to Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas to him. He is the gatekeeper of the Holy Dam. He is Gopeshwar in Vrindavan. So, you know, there's no entrance to any of our holy pilgrimages places without the blessings and protection and guidance of Lord Shiva, Mahadev. So, thank you all. All glories to Mahadev, Neelchal, Nataraj, Shadashai, Bhaganga, Darvishesh for all glories to Shadashiva, Kijai.